Hi, I'm Anna and welcome back to my channel Building a Business. So if you're interested in rental real estate, you're probably also considering whether or not to get a mortgage to help you finance your property. Luckily these days there are a ton of different free options online that will calculate your monthly payment for your mortgage as well as create an amortization schedule for you so that you can figure out what equity you'll have in your property at any given time. And while these resources are really great, I found that it was actually helpful for me to calculate all of these values myself so that I could better understand how they interacted with each other and what types of values I was looking for. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate your monthly payment on your mortgage by hand, as well as to determine how much of that specific monthly payment is going towards your loan paydown versus going towards interest on any given month. So let's get right into the example. So let's say you found this home and you want to purchase it. The purchase price is $100,000 and you are going to put down 20% for your down payment, which is equal to $20,000. So here's the mortgage information. The loan amount is $80,000, which is simply the purchase price of $100,000 minus the down payment of $20,000. You've chosen a loan length of 30 years, and the interest rate, which you did not decide but was given to you by the bank or other lending institution, is 3.5%. So what will the monthly payment be? So we have to think in terms of months instead of years. And so here we have converted 30 years into 360 months. Similarly, the interest rate of 3.5% is per year. And so convert it to months, you divide by 12 months, and you get an interest rate of 0.29%. Now, this is not the exact value. The exact value is 0.29166666667, and it goes on. But for the simple calculations we're doing here, we just say it's 0.29%. So the equation that you use to determine your monthly mortgage payment, or in this equation, M, it's equal to P times i times 1 plus i to the n all over 1 plus i to the n minus 1. So we just discussed that m is your monthly mortgage payment. However, we haven't discussed what the other variables mean. p stands for the loan amount, in this case $80,000. i stands for the interest rate per month, or 3.5% divided by 12. And then lastly, N stands for the number of months, in this case, 360. If we plug in the values for our specific situation, we have $80,000 times 0 0.0029. Now remember, when you convert 0.29% into an actual value, you divide by 100. Therefore, the 0.29% becomes 0 0.0029 times 1.0029 to the 360th divided by 1.0029 to the 360th minus 1. All of this comes out to equal a monthly payment of $359. Now to check my math, I went on to bankrate.com's mortgage calculator, and sure enough, when I entered a home price of $100,000, showed that I would be paying a down payment of $20,000, with the loan length of 30 years and an interest rate of 3.5%, I got the same monthly payment of $359 per month. If you want to find this mortgage calculator for yourself, check in the description where I've put the link. So as a brief overview, here's our mortgage information. The loan amount is $80,000, the length is 30 years, the interest rate is 3.5%, and the monthly payment is $359. So now you may be thinking, okay, I have a mortgage for 30 years, which is equal to 360 months, and each month I'll be paying $359. Therefore, $359 per month times 360 months should equal my loan amount of $80,000, right? Well, actually that's wrong. The real answer is that it equals 129240 The reason for this discrepancy is because of the interest rate. You're not paying back exactly what you're borrowed. You're paying back more than you borrowed. So how much will I end up paying in interest? The interest that you pay each month is dependent on your loan balance at that given month. So the equation is the loan balance at that given month times the loan interest rate, which in our example is 3.5% divided by 12. 
That's the same thing as saying it's the loan balance at that given month times the monthly interest rate, which we determined earlier was 0.29%. So that's how much you pay in interest per month. The remaining payment goes towards paying off your balance. Therefore, the payment that goes towards paying off your balance each month is equal to your monthly payment, which in this case, every single month is $359, minus the interest paid that month. Now let's go through these calculations for specific months. So here is for the very first month when the amount of our loan is still $80,000. So if we take $80,000 and multiply it by 0 0.035 divided by 12, which remember 0 0.035 is equal to 3.5%, we get an interest paid of $233. That means of the total mortgage payment that month, $233 of it is going towards interest. Now the payment going towards the balance is the remainder. So we take the total mortgage payment of $359 and subtract the interest paid of $233, and the result is $126 going towards the paydown of the balance. Therefore, in the next month, the balance of our mortgage would be $80,000 minus $126. You may see this and think, wow, such a huge percentage of my payment each month is going towards interest as opposed to paying down my mortgage. In fact, in this example, it's almost double the amount of money going towards interest as going towards loan pay down. But if you think about it, the very next month when you calculate this value, your interest paid will go down slightly because instead of the mortgage value being $80,000, it was now $80,000 minus $126. Sure, at the beginning, that's a very small difference, but it gradually adds up over the course of 30 years. For example, let's look now when you have paid off half of your mortgage. So your remaining balance is now $40,000. It's the same equation, but the value of interest paid on this particular month has decreased to $117. That means that the payment going towards paying off your balance this month has increased to $242. Now there's clearly a much larger percentage of your monthly payment going towards pay down versus interest. This difference only becomes more extreme as you pay down more and more of your mortgage balance. So for example here, when you have $20,000 left on your mortgage, the interest paid is only $58 compared to the pay down amount of $301. And as the last example, when you have $10,000 left on your mortgage, your interest is only $29 per month, as opposed to $330, which are going towards paying down your balance. So if you're visualizing these payments, you may realize that you're paying the majority of your interest up front. Here's a graphical representation of what I'm talking about. So here on the x-axis, you see the number of months that have elapsed, and on the y-axis, you see your loan balance. On month zero, you see your loan balance is $80,000, just as we expect, and on month 360, your loan balance is $0. You can clearly see that the path isn't linear. Look at when you've paid down half of your mortgage. At this point, your loan balance is $40,000. If you go to $40,000 on the y-axis and go down to the x-axis corresponding, you see that it's probably somewhere between 220 months and 230 months. Essentially what this means is that you spend approximately the first two thirds of your mortgage paying down the first half of it, and then the last third of your mortgage paying down the second half. The similar but opposite graph shows your equity in the property. So at the very beginning, you own 20% equity because you put a 20% down payment. Then, at the very end of your mortgage, you own $100,000 or 100% equity in the property. And in between, your equity is growing each month, but it's growing a lot slower at the beginning when you're paying a lot of interest versus it grows much quicker at the end when you're paying very little interest. So now let's look at the exact values that you're actually paying in interest in principle for year one. So your loan balance at the start of the year is $80,000, or essentially the full mortgage amount from the very beginning. In month one, just like every other month, you pay $359 for your monthly payment. As we calculated a few slides ago, that means your interest is $233 and your principal is $126. Your balance is now $80,000 minus the $126 you just paid of your principal. That leaves you with a balance after the first month of $79,874.
Now you repeat the process for the second month, but this time you calculate your interest based off of your updated balance of $79,874 instead of your original balance of $80,000. You may notice, however, that in month two, the amount you pay towards interest and principal stays exactly the same as in month one. This is not actually the case. It only looks that way because we've rounded to the nearest dollar. However, if you included the cents on the interest and principal payments, you would realize that you did in fact pay more interest and less principal in month one than you did in month two. Month three, again, you have similar values. However, your principal went up by a dollar. You can see that when you add your interest and principal for month three together, you actually get $360 instead of 359. Again, this is just a rounding error due to keeping each value a full numeric dollar amount instead of adding the cents but the overall concept remains the same. If you look down your interest payments for the first year, you can see that they gradually decrease. At the same time, if you look down your principal payments in year one, they gradually increase. This trend continues for the rest of the loan. Let's go to year 30 to see how it looks in your very last year. So if you do all the calculations, you determine that in year 30, you start off with a loan balance of $4,230. Now in the first month of year 30, your interest is only $12 and the principal you pay is $347. But you see the same trend happening that you did in year one, where the interest rate decreases slightly as you get further down the year and your principal increases as you go down. You can see at the very end on the last month, your overall balance hits $0. You have officially paid off your mortgage. So as just a brief comparison, here are the different stats for year one versus year 30. In particular, look at the principal paid in each year versus the interest paid. In year 30, the amount you paid towards your principal is almost three times the amount you paid towards your principal in year one. Therefore, you can see why you pay down your loan much faster as you get towards the end of your mortgage than you do at the beginning. Now this specific example describes just one potential mortgage. And while the concept remains the same for any mortgage that you would get, the exact values will vary. So what I did is create my own mortgage amortization schedule. With this Excel document, I'm able to put in any purchase price, any percent down, that will automatically calculate my down payment amount, and it will automatically calculate my loan amount. I can also enter my loan term, and so I can change how many years my loan is for. I can change the interest rate. And once I've entered those values, it'll automatically calculate my monthly payment. These are the exact values that I used in the example previously. As you can see, I start with a balance of $80,000 and an equity of $20,000. Same interest and principal on the first month. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see that there's the same values at the end where I have zero left of my mortgage and I have an equity of $100,000. What I've also done is calculate the total principal I paid, which should also always be the exact loan amount and the interest paid. I've then calculated the total amount paid on my mortgage, as well as the percentage of principal I paid versus interest I paid. So now if you think about it, when I go and change my interest rate, that will change my monthly payment. But what it'll also do is change the percentage and the amount of interest paid. So let's just, for example, change 3.5 to 5%. You can see the monthly payment increased by $70 per month. That is not insignificant. But maybe even more interesting is if you go over here, you can see the total principal paid and interest paid radically changed. It's now 50% principal to 48% interest. Essentially, you're paying almost the same amount in interest as you're paying in principal over the lifetime of the loan. So for these two reasons, the lower monthly payment and the overall amount of interest you paid, the lower your interest rate, the better. Now, for example, let's say that my purchase price isn't $100,000, but actually $250,000. So I enter that there. And let's say that to be safer, I've put down 50% instead of a down payment of 20%. It now shows me what my down payment is and my loan amount as well as the other information, and I can see that my monthly payment is $561. If you scroll down, you'll see essentially the same results, where the amount of interest I pay decreases, the amount I pay towards my loan pay down increases, 
And at the very end, I end up fully paying off my mortgage and having 100% equity in the home. In this particular example, the percentages are the same as for when the purchase price of the home was $100,000 and the down payment was 20% because these values are dependent on the interest rate and not the purchase price or the down payment. Now, I mentioned earlier that I could also change the loan term. So another common example is a 15-year mortgage. So let's do that. Let's type in 15 years. So you can now see the monthly payment increased by a lot. And as I scroll down, you'll be able to see that when I hit month 180, which is equivalent to 15 years, I have a mortgage value left of $0. So I've completely paid off my mortgage and I have 100% equity in the home. Additionally, you can see that the percentage that I paid towards my principal is significantly higher than the percentage I paid towards my interest, especially when you compare that to a 30-year mortgage. So there you have it. This is my Excel mortgage amortization schedule. If you have any interest in making this Excel for yourself, please comment it below so that I can make a video showing you exactly how to make this Excel. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it below and please subscribe to follow along on my journey. I will be posting a new video every Thursday and Sunday through the end of June. Thank you.